Good morning, this is Beatrice Vivius on East St. Lucia Drive. I'll switch on the dash, the dash cam because of the traffic. Normally interesting things happen when people are intimidated by slow traffic flow. Yes, I say intimidated. Need to change the setup around the camera a little bit. Doesn't portray my skills as a photographer very well. Oh yeah. 300 feet they say. Your indicator has to be on in America, otherwise the cops arrest you. <laughs> There's interesting things happening. A little blue car thought he can slip in at the right hand side of the truck. And he's still trying to do it. What is that 10 seconds gonna save you on the long run? Oh, there he does it anyway. Illegal in entrance into traffic flow and I don't know what else. Or da dangerous entrance anyway. Another guy comes from, from behind. I always thought it's only the white buckies, but this morning I say it's the purple, purple blue cars as well. Well, let's talk about human rights and how it affects us in South Africa and our safety and our work and our property because this is a confusing subject. Human rights works like this. A life, innocence, dignity, property. So before I can attack a person's dignity, well, a person's dignity is worth more than my property. And his innocence until proven guilty is worth more than my property. And his life is worth more than my property. Now, how do you figure this out if somebody comes down to burn, comes out to burn down your property? How does that work? Because life is, is more important than property. So if there's nobody inside the property, you cannot take his life. Because he's threatening nobody's life. The law also says that you have to you have to move away from a dangerous situation. So if angry mobs move into my residential area and I'm inside the house or inside the property, it's a different scenario. But let's say there's nobody at the property and I'm trying to get to my house. And the mop is between me and my ass. I cannot force myself to get to my ass. If 
they are starting to burn down my property, I cannot take a life to protect my property. Yeah, I must move away from a dangerous situation. It's my property. The danger is the mob and the burning down of my house. So I will have to move away. Isn't that confusing? Isn't that why we're having all this um, problems in South Africa with respect and building? If I say that other cultures destroy property rather than build it, I'm attacking their dignity. So although if a certain culture is more likely to burn down a school than another culture, I cannot point that out in such a way that I attack the culture's dignity. Now this is where Penny Sparrow did it wrong. She attacked the dignity of the black people. Now, an interesting thing, a meeting that I had the other day regarding property. In Zululand, in KwaZulu Natal, We've got the Ngunyama Trust and the custodian of the Ngunyama Trust is basically the king. Now, the king is under the constitution because nobody is higher than the constitution. So, if I want property, Or anybody wants property, even a Zulu subject wants property from the king or from the Nguyama Trust. They have to oblige and give the person, the people, property. But this is the catch. You only get permission to occupy. You don't get ownership. Then we drive past these rural areas where people's got permission to occupy and we ask ourselves, why is there a shack? with a DV, DSTV decoder and a BMW or a smart Mercedes parked outside. Don't these people care, these occupants care enough about their dignity that they want to improve the quality of their life by building a proper house? Yeah, for sure they do. But, if they get property ownership, they have to pay rates and taxes. Which is nowadays, with corruption, no longer a meager amount. Now, in a budget, A person is allowed to indebt himself with one third of his gross income. Now let's say 
that person's gross income is 30,000 Rand a month. He can indebt, that person can indebt himself to 10,000 Rand a month. That person needs to live in a shack, 1,000 Rand for DSTV. Let's make it a lot. 3,000 Rand for living expenses. You can add another, let's be handsome, another 1,000 Rand a month for electricity. Now we're at 5,000 Rand a month. There's another 5,000 Rand a month left over. Every two months you can buy yourself a lounge suite, bedroom suite. Maybe you've already bought it on on HP or installments. It's part of your 10,000 Rand debt that you allow. So maybe you just bought the BMW. I mean, at the current interest rate, you can buy roughly a 600,000 Rand car, 10, 6, and 800,000 Rand vehicle for 10,000 Rand a month. Now, this is where the problem is. Because if that same household was inside or on a title deed property. The rates and taxes, refuse removal, and the water bowl. Comfortably, comfortably, 2,000 Rand a month. Now that comes from the 5,000. That leaves the person with 3,000. Why am I not going into the other 10,000? Personal tax, medical aid, health insurance, bank charges, And if there's anything left over from that 10,000 Rand, let's call it um, school fees and education. Counting, we would call it SAPS. Now we've got 3,000 Rand left. Now that kids has to go to a Model C school, because education is not free in a Model C school. All of a sudden, you're looking at another 600 Rand a month. Uh, it's closer to 900 Rand a month for school fees per child. You've got three children and you have to take them to school. Where do you get the money for the books, the clothes? The sports. Now you see people. This is the problem. The problem is not ethnicity. The problem is not racial. The problem is not cultural. The problem is the Joneses. I don't know why you blame it on Faribiak. Maybe he was a Jones. I don't know. But that 10,000 Rand BMW, that's where the problem is. If you waited three months, could have bought a car for cash. Five months. Could have bought a car for cash, sorry. We work on five months. Car I'm driving in now. 
disgusted me with right worthy Call it 50,000 Rand. Another thousand, oh, let's be generous, 2,000 Rand a month on fuel because we already added to that other 10,000 Rand. Now I have to put aside a thousand rand a month for maintenance on the vehicle. Because the tires on this vehicle, this 10,000 rand, oil changes, air filter, loop services. It easily be a thousand three hundred, thousand five hundred rand a shot. If your fuel consumption is two thousand rand a month, you're gonna have to do some sort of a service every two to three months, and you have to go and buy a ten thousand rand tires every eighteen months. Now that leaves us over with 9,000 Rand a month to pay for school fees, education, eating out, because we already put the, 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 the food aside from the middle 10,000 Rand. So people I'm say, telling you today, I'm sorry to say that, but the problem is not apartheid, the problem is the Joneses. Very good friend of mine, I won't call him and name his name, but if you watch the video you'll know who it is, he's got a license disc on his second hand Ford Ranger that cost him 12,000 Rand a month excluding insurance maintenance that says I'm proud to be black if we add maintenance to that very expensive vehicle and insurance to that 300,000 Rand vehicle we're looking at 15 18,000 Rand a month that proud to be black gentleman has to earn 60,000 Rand a month before he, the bank could legally offer him the installments that's his private vehicle that he runs the kids to Durban for education private schools universities I mean this is this gentleman's third wife Some of his children are already 30 years old. I don't even know how many he's got. On top of that, he has to pay for three households. So his food is not 4,000 Rand a month, it's 12,000 Rand a month. But it's fine, he's now got 20,000 Rand because he borrowed a vehicle for about 20,000 Rand. He bought a vehicle for about 20,000 Rand a month. So the middle 20,000 Rand just cover all the three households. 
But that's not all. He bought another vehicle for the business. That's 15,000 Rand a month. Without insurance, maintenance, fuel. So let's say we miscalculate it a little bit on the Ford Ranger, the proud to, thank God I'm proud to be black. And we add this two together and we say, okay, insurance, maintenance, everything is 40,000 Rand a month. Legally, this gentleman, this proud to be black gentleman, has to earn 120,000 Rand a month to drive these vehicles. 120,000 Rand a month. The vehicle I'm driving costed me 50,000 Rand. This gentleman can drive every two months two vehicles like this a month and have a spare change but that's not my point my point is at a hundred and twenty thousand rand a month this guy has got an RTP has built on his property, his permission to occupy property. And his toilets are outside. Listen, Julius Malema. A gentleman that is proud to be black shits outside. Does that make any sense to you? Why the hell have you got the audacity to blame apartheid? Why do you lie to the people and tell them it's apartheid that they're living in the shacks? Julius Malema is one of these people that say I'm a racist if I call myself superior to black people. We are all humans. Remember that this thing that I said life, innocence, dignity, property. We are all humans. I'm not allowed to look down on a black person. But I have to respect myself being called a human and share the title of humanity with somebody as stupid as Julius Malema. I thank you for watching my video.